why don't we take a look here at uh, at something a bit funnier, right? So American Pickle the debuts this week on HBO Max. It's the first HBO Max original movie. This one starring Seth Rogen. And it's one that looks interesting. It's about a dude who falls into pickle brine, gets pickled for a hundred years, wakes up in New York, and like he meets his 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 relative, who is also played by Seth Rogen. The movie looks pretty funny. Uh, the trailer was pretty good and it looked like it was going to be kind of a heartfelt sort of thing. And apparently 73% of critics at this point are kind of agreeing with it with a total ratings count or a review count of 30. And I wanted to just take a quick look at the, uh, at what the critics are saying about this because it's always kind of, uh, fascinating. But for those of you who don't know what the story is real quick, Seth Rogen stars as Herschel Greenbaum, a struggling laborer who immigrates to America in 1920 with the dreams of better, building a better life for his family. One day while working at his factory, Factory job, he falls into a vat of pickles and is brined for a hundred years. The brine preserves him perfectly, and when he emerges in present-day Brooklyn, he finds that he hasn't aged a day. But when he seeks out his family, he's troubled to learn that his only surviving relative is his great-grandson, Ben Greenbaum, also played by Seth Rogen, a mild-mannered computer coder whom Herschel can't even begin to understand. So it's clearly fish out of water, it's clearly kind of lost in time, it's clearly all of these things and it looks pretty damn funny and it's only PG 13. So it's kind of, it's kind of fun for the whole family, I think. Uh, so this is what critics are saying here. A uh, Al Horner from empire gives it a positive saying American pickle gags underwhelm, but it's emotion and originality will surprise you. One of the oddest films of 2020 so far, buoy, uh, buoy, buoyed, buoyed, <laughs> whatever by two superb terms from Rogan. And the thing is like, look, it's not even that original of a concept. You know, there's like a Mel Gibson movie from like back in the day where he did the same thing, uh, you know, like went forward in time and, and whatever. And it's like, we've seen this, you know, just, I think it's like just nights or something with John Renault and Christina Applegate from back in the early two thousands or late nineties. I forget when, you know, these kind of movies, it's not an original concept. The idea of him being brined for a hundred years original, but other than that, it's not so much. Uh, Jesse Hassinger from AV Club says the film fails to build its laughs into substantial comic momentum or even construct many substantial scenes, giving it a C plus uh, or a rotten rating. Although a C plus could still be considered like fresh. I don't know. It's kind of dumb. Uh, all right. So Michael Phillips here from Chicago Tribune says, well, an American pickle is a different sort of comic fable than Rogan's best known work. That's enough of an edge to make it stick. And I do like that Rogan does play up a lot of these kind of dumber roles a lot of the time. Barry Hertz from Globe and Mail says, while the themes will hit uh, any moviegoer who still winces at the awkward memories of their bar or bat mitzvah particularly hard, the push and pull between expectations and autonomy, faith and identity are universal. I don't, I don't know, sir. I'm, I'm not of a Jewish descent. Um, well, I'm, I am on my father's side, but that, you know, I've never, that doesn't count. And I've never had the bar mitzvah, uh, clearly not a, a bat mitzvah. Uh, I've been to a couple They were, they were good times. So I really don't, I don't know how much that's going to like, <laughs> I don't know how much that's going to like stick with me. I don't know why that would be your quote. <laughs> it's, it's not aimed, it's not aimed at people like me. It's really not. It's just not. Uh, but okay, cool. I'm, I'm glad you, I'm glad you like it. Uh, David Rooney says here from the Hollywood reporter, aside from one guffaw inducing sight gag with a dried fish, the humor here is strictly low key, like a black comedy, uh, version of a Sholem Akayim story, but it grounds the movie in a disarming, a uh, disarming celebration of Jewish identity. Okay. So this is going to piss off the Nazis. Let's just be fair. But then again, I don't think a lot of Nazis are going to really be all for a Seth Rogen movie, if you catch my meaning. So if this movie is uh, all about uh, celebrating Jewish heritage and, uh, you know, old, old, like uh, the old country and old school to new school and, and faith and all that stuff, uh, it might be lost on a few people. I, I have friends who are, you know, Jewish and, and I've known, known them growing up. And I know enough about the tradition, I think, to be able to uh, understand what's, what's going to be happening here. But Brian Truitt from USA Today didn't like it. He says, uh, American Pickle is, suffice it to say, not a big deal, even with a double Rogan in dual roles. Okay, that's, I, I get the dill joke, sir, but it, it still fell flat. Uh, Nate Adams, the only critic, also gives it a negative review, saying, an American Pickle uh, struggles to find balance. Is it comedy, drama, political satire? The film dabbles with all three and the charm of Seth Rogen isn't enough to carry the load, and you wonder why the film didn't invest time in secondary characters. Well, I mean, I haven't seen it, but I can only, you know, you have Seth Rogen playing dual roles here. So you have two characters, same actor. That's where a lot of the focus is going to be. That's where a lot of that, that type of drama 
and comedy and character development is going to be, which is the primary focus of this. So I would assume that not having a lot of side characters isn't really that big of a deal. I mean, you know, it, it, I, you don't always need that. If you can, you can still tell a, a whole story with like only two main characters. It can be done. You know, people like side characters because they're funny, but here I don't think it really matters. Uh, again, another way, is this another Al Horner? Wait, he posted two? Oh no, they posted it twice. There we go. That's lame. That's, that's Rotten Tomatoes for you, right? Uh, Rodrigo Perez from the playlist says using pickles as a jumping off point to discuss your pedigree and family tree isn't likely what you'd expect from Seth Rogen, or perhaps that's why pickle is such a tasty, sour, free treat. Here's the thing with that. If you've ever followed Seth Rogen's career, that's exactly what you would expect from him. I mean, think about it like Pineapple Express. It's a weed action movie. Uh, super bad. You know, you've got uh, the interview two guys, you know, they get hired by the government to effectively go and kill Kim Jong-un like Sausage Party. He's he's done a lot of this stuff. He does these weird kind of comedies he'll pop up in, you know, so it's like, it's really not out of the realm of possibility for uh, Seth Rogen. I think if, if you paid attention to his, to his work at all, you know that. Charlie Ridgely here from comicbook.com says it's a weird movie, but it's the kind of weird that you enjoy spending time with. It's charm and uh, far outweighs its shortcomings and its swing for the fences approach makes it stand out in a surprisingly crowded streaming slate, which is very true right now. It's pretty crowded on streaming, but having a movie that's called Amer an American pickle. It's a story about a dude getting brined for a hundred years. That could be and it starts Seth Rogen. That could be enough to get people to go. Yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll drop some cash on HBO Max. Maybe I'll go and check that out. Give it a watch and see how I like it. Uh, Chris Cigar here from Screen Rant says American Pickle is a fun, fleeting buddy comedy that stretches its humorous premise a bit too thin, minimizing the story's impact. OK, yeah, I can see that if they're trying to tell these really dumb, stupid jokes, but they end up telling a lot of really dumb, stupid jokes and it doesn't land. I can see that. And finally, Scud, good old, good old Scott Mendelson says here, a thoughtful, nuanced, and character-specific comedy about human loneliness and taking the incredible for granted, anchored by another super, superb, understated comic turn from Seth Rogen. And that's the thing. I do like Seth Rogen qu quite a bit, actually. I uh, have uh, been a fan uh, for about 20 years now. I've been a fan, so I'm, I'm good on that one. Okay, so yeah, that Mel Gibson movie was Forever Young. Thank you very much.